I have the pleasure now to invite one of the pioneers of renewable energy in Germany, in the meantime also worldwide, uh, Hans-Josef Fell, who used to be a member of the German parliament and as such one of the authors of the maybe most important single legislation, the German Renewable Energy Act, which was um, um, then also, I think, applied in a similar way in many countries around the world. Hans-Josef, you are now the president of the Energy Watch Group and also one of the initiators of the Global 100 RE Strategy Group, also an ambassador of the Global 100% Renewable Energy Platform. And I have the pleasure to hand over to you to share your views, your vision of a renewable future. Thank you, Stefan. It's a great pleasure and thank you for your kind introduction, your invitation and your engagement in all this 100% renewable issues. It is very, very important. And I love to see Tetsu. Um, again, we often met us in the world today. It is not possible because of the pandemic, but we hope we can overcome this crisis and see us again in reality. I would love to do it. I was often in Japan and um, discussed with politicians, with media and others about the renewable energy issues. My last visit was about two years ago to visit in Fukushima region and I could see both. One side, the still existing terrible situation with radioactivity, not in all regions. We have some clean regions now around Fukushima. The people work very hard and very good. But we have in other regions like in the woods or anywhere uh, still too high radioactivity, what limits the possibilities for the people to live. On the other sides, I could see um, engaged people, plenty of people who worked on the solution that Japan will come independent from nuclear and fossil power. I could see farmers with agri-photovoltaics very successful. I could see geothermal um, electricity production and others. I could see wind power. So, and I could see there are wonderful people in um, Fukushima region and in Japan by the whole who work on 100% renewables. And my congratulations to all of them um, to bring that forward. How important it is, I will show in my presentation um, this is very important. First of all, I will speak shortly over the necessity why we have to come to 100% renewables. Um, the situation in Germany and what does it work about the hinders behind the legislation and what have we to in the legislation to come fast by 2030 to 100% renewables world. So we see the necessity is very, very crucial. The newest scientific reports from the climate scientists show us here from NASA, but, but you can see plenty others. The situation of um, increasing world temperature is so hard that we will exceed 1.5 degrees global warming by 2030, latest, latest 2035. This is a situation at the moment very crucial and we all have to do that we stop this increasing, but it is not possible with the most um, decisions from the politician decision makers to come to a climate neutrality by 2050. This is much too late. We must come to a zero emission world until 2030. Otherwise, we will exceed even two degrees global warming and come into a um, um, hothouse earth with the decreasing of the humankind society. It is very, very serious. And therefore, we have to go much, much faster. Most people believe it is impossible to come to a zero emission world until 2030. In the center of the emissions, most emissions are emitted by the energy sector, fossil, um, coal, natural gas and oil. And nuclear is no help for this because it is too slow. It is too expensive. It is too dangerous. It is too polluting and it is 
too dangerous even for nuclear weapons. So nuclear is no uh, chance for it. But how can we come to it? We organized a joint declaration with the Global 100% Renewable Strategy Group. These are the main leaders, researchers in the world from USA in California, in Europe, Germany, Denmark, Finland, and in Australia. And the decision of this declaration is clear. When we have the political will in the world, over all nations, the global energy sector, the whole energy sector, not only electricity and power sector, can be transformed by 2030 to 100% renewables. We can achieve this massive exponential growth rates. We have plenty examples in the world that this fast track is possible and in other industry sectors, mostly in digitalization, in information technologies and others. And therefore, we have the hope to go this way when the opposition against renewables is removed. Solar and wind and flexibility will be the key pillars of energy, but we must include as well um, hydropower, bioenergy, geothermal, uh, all are important to bring flexibility. And our message is also 100% renewable system will benefit the world economy. Climate protection is not a burden for the economy for the world. It is a benefit for the world, economically, social aspects and plenty others, peace express and so on. We can show in Germany that with political will, the growth rates can be very fast. We see the share of, hundred of um, renewable electricity, beginning from 2006% share, we introduced the feed-in tariff law with um, Renewable Energy Act. And we could see since this time, we have an exponential growth rate. Even every seven years, we have the doubling of the share of renewables. All the targets of the government was overfulfilled. 12% in 2000, we got 19%, 30% in 2020, we have now 50%, it is possible. And when we look to this increasing rates, we can see the next doubling period would bring 100% renewables about 2027. It is possible to go much faster than all the targets of the political decision makers is. And this is in a time during we had in the last decades a dramatic decline of the yearly investment. Here's the example of wind power. In two years, wind power investment onshore declined from nearly five gigawatt to under one gigawatt. And offshore wind energy is also declining. We could much higher, much higher invest. The same is in solar investment, in bioenergy, in hydropower, in geothermal. So this means we could go faster even our speed is. And the question is, why do we have this decline in the yearly investment? And for, before we come to the answer to this question, we must repeat who were the society, the people who invested mostly in T renewables. In Germany, the big utilities RWE, Vattenfall, ENBW did invest only six percentage of renewable energies. They did nearly not take part on this transition. But the most investment came from the private people, from farmers, from newcomers, from private project planners, from funds and banks, and small energy providers, not the big ones. And so we see the most important is the community power to stimulate and to give the chances for the people to go on. And exactly this was in the German newest decisions declined. The reasons are a dramatical political amendments in the Renewable Energy Act. Firstly, the switch to auctioning, wind, rooftop, freefield, PV declined. We got a high and increasing bureaucracy. Solar investors 
on their own rooftops have to pay extra charging and permission problems, lawsuits against wind projects are increasing as well. All is not stopped, but introduced by politicians who want to support nuclear and fossil system and not renewable energy system. And therefore, what we see, we have in the last years, especially in, in solar, an increasing rate. And this is because of PV and wind are now the cheapest energy option by the whole in the world. And therefore, the um, unsupported investment is increasing. But it is not enough to have only unsupported investment. We must support it by the politicians with a wonderful fit-in tariff law and others. And therefore, we have to change the situation to go in. And we must first recognize why does auctioning limit the investment in community power? We created a big um, study in 20 countries everywhere the same picture. When the switch from a um, good successful feed-in tariff law goes to auctioning, then we have less investment, we have limited investment by the auctioning volume, we have a decline of investment because the actors, mostly the community power, cannot take part. It is too hard for a cooperative or for private people to take part on the auctionings. And so they are excluded in this way. And this is the most important situation. We have to come back to feed in tariff law and auctioning and tenders are a good idea in utility scale investment, offshore wind parks and others. That's okay to go with auctioning system. But up to 50 megawatt, we have to come back everywhere to feed in tariff and a wider industry mix. And how fast it can work, we can see in Vietnam. In the solar roof of Vietnam, you can see the situation in Germany. In Germany, solar roof increased only from 2.6 gigawatt to 3.0 gigawatt in one year in Vietnam. No, they had a new fit-in tariff, a very wonderful. And we had an, could see an increasing within one year from 378 megawatt investment to 9,500 megawatt investment. And this shows very disruptive increasing rates are possible. The industry, the people can do it. It depends only on the political will to make the right political framework. And therefore is a question, what is the right political framework? Fill-in tariffs are crucial for small and medium scale, up to 50 megawatt. We need a new fit-in tariff for combined 100% renewables. I will explain um, in the next slide. Auctionings only for utility scale projects. We have to abolish all fossil and nuclear subsidizing. Everywhere in the world, the subsidizing of fossil and nuclear is increasing instead of decreasing. And this makes it hard for the renewable sector to take part in this market when the fossil and nuclear is so highly subsidized. We need taxing, but not only for carbon dioxide, because when you tax only carbon dioxide, the natural gas will have a benefit, but natural gas has a lot of emissions of methane in the forechain, in drilling and in pipelines. Methane is high polluting the climate and natural gas is no answer for climate protection. It is as polluting the climate as coal industry. Therefore, make a polluting tax, tax carbon, methane, radioactivity and air pollution, that's important. Research and education campaigning, we must reduce all the licensing obstacles to help them. And we must identify which political laws are not successful. It is clear certificate systems and emission trading. Emission trading did help nearly nothing to promote climate protection. Therefore, 
we have to go to this political issues what I mentioned. But how can we in, um, stimulate that what we need now? We need now the combination of renewable energies together with storages and digitalization that the renewable energies can serve the grids with the necessity what the grid operator needs. We have to invest and to feed up the grid when the consumers need electricity and not only when a lot sun is shining and wind is blowing. We have to balance the fluctuations with a mix of all renewables and a mix of storage systems. And we have to combine them with big data, the smart home systems, smart city systems, with all this what is possible. The technologies are there, they are ripe, but there is nearly no investment. We see nearly no, only investment in single investment in solar, in single solar um, um, wind power parks, in single biogas stations, and not into the combination. Therefore, our proposal is to make a new law with a feed-in tariff that stimulates combined power, power plant remuneration. Give a tariff that an investor who brings a combination of renewables with storages, the, all the electricity, how the grid operators needs it. This would stimulate a fast growth and we have not the necessity to bring to strengthen the grid in this way what we have to do without such a remuneration and without such a um, situation. So you can download all this from the Energy Watch Group homepage. We have the political studies and we have uh, the proposals written in English and in sometimes also in other languages. You are free. Um, contact us. We would be happy to advise all the governments in the world how to do the best political framework. Thank you for your interest. Thank you so much, Hans-Josef. That was a very inspiring presentation based on your experience. And uh, I think it is very good to, of course, to hear um, you, about your, that you're very confident that what can be achieved. We can achieve, that's what you said, the 100% the renewable energy world much faster than many people anticipate. And it's great to see that you have now uh, teamed up with these uh, people, these leading experts from around the world who all tell us the same message. It can be done much, much faster than um, some decision makers want us to believe. And I also find it very important that you emphasize how important it is to involve the people, encourage the people, citizens, communities, that they have to play an important role I know that that's how you started uh, personally, setting up one of the first uh, solar PV systems in the south of Germany, where you are in the first feed-in tariff. Um, yeah, policies to matter. I think that's a, the the other conclusion that we can draw. And I mean, um, your specific your recommendations are very specific in some ways. But what we really need are the right policies that are not kind of excluding some investors, but the uh, policies which are encouraging, in particular those many small investors. Um, thank you so much, Hans-Josef. Just let, uh, let's uh, see whether there are some questions still coming up for you.